Do you want to make better cutouts for your composites in Photoshop? If so, then check out these three amazing masking tips and tricks, which includes one that shows you how to deal with hair and busy backgrounds. Why don't we jump right into the tutorial? In this tip, I'm going to show you why using blending modes is not always the best solution for images like this. Let me show you what I mean by that. If you have a layer where you have a black background and a white foreground and you want to keep the white areas, a lot of times the easiest thing to do is select the screen blending mode and that removes the black and keeps the white. But this is not always the best solution because sometimes you may want to apply a layer style or certain effects to the actual objects in the scene. And if you were to do it with the blending mode, it wouldn't work. As you can see here, if I apply a bevel and emboss, it wouldn't apply it to the actual white pixels. Instead, it'll apply it to the edge of the canvas. And that's not what we want. So let me show you how to get actual transparency from something like this. I'll change the blending mode back to normal and from the channels panel you can see all the channels that make up this image in an image like this all the channels will be exactly the same and all you need to do is hold control on windows command on the mac and click on any one of these channels so that you can load the bright pixels as a selection i'll click on rgb go back into the layers panel and create a new solid color fill layer set it to white and press ok and that'll give me basically the same result and I have actual transparency. So when I double click to the side of the layer, I can apply a bevel and emboss and I can adjust it accordingly and make it seem like this is actual snow on that background. I can also add a drop shadow and adjust the different settings to get a more realistic result. I'll press OK. And if I click on the effects eye icon, you can see the before and the after. I'm going to show you now what to do when you get fringing those white outlines around the edges of your mask. So one of the easiest ways to cut out a person from a background is to use the remove background feature in Photoshop. You can click on the lock icon to unlock the layer. Then from the properties panel under quick actions, you'll see the remove background button. When you click on it, Photoshop will use artificial intelligence known as Adobe Sensei to remove the background from the photo. In most cases, it does a really good job, but we do have a problem. And so that you can better see the problem, I'm going to create a solid color fill layer, make it dark gray and place it below the layer. One way of moving layers is by using a keyboard shortcut. If you press control on Windows, command on the Mac and tap on the left bracket key, it will move the layer down. And if you hold control, command on the Mac and tap on the right bracket key, it will move a layer up. So you can use those keyboard shortcuts to easily move layers up and down. But you'll see a few issues. First, the artificial intelligence missed this area here. So you can simply paint with black on these pixels on the layer mask to hide that effect and I'll select a round brush and I can make the brush smaller by tapping on the left bracket key on the keyboard. Then I'll quickly remove some of these imperfections. I don't have to be very precise. That's not the point of this tutorial, but I do want it to look a little nicer and not have these large white areas. And I'll also remove the white areas in between your fingers. Again, I'm not being very precise, but in your projects do take the time to fine tune these smaller details. We'll call this good for now. But what I want you to focus on is these white edges. And one of the easiest ways to remove them is by using the minimum filter in Photoshop. If you go into filter, other, you can select minimum, make sure that the layer mask is selected, that the focus, the white outline is on the layer mask, and then you can contract the mask by a number of pixels. In this case, we probably don't need to go so far. So I'll just, adjust it accordingly into the edge halos are gone. I think 1.6 pixels is good in this case. This is before and after. You can also select an algorithm that will preserve either square or round edges. In this case, roundness will give me a better result. So I'll press OK. So all the edge halos are now gone from my image. What I can do now is select the layer mask and click on select and mask. And I can simply smooth out those edges and apply a little bit of contrast to make those edges sharper and I can press OK. And this is an extra tip. What I can do now is work on the hair. So I always like to make all my edge adjustments first and leave the hair to the very end. So I'll go back into the selected mask workspace, select the refine edge tool and paint on the edges around her hair to reveal those hair strands. 
When you're done, just press OK and that will look much, much better. You can always go back if you missed an area. It looks like I missed an area right here. You can go back into the selected mask workspace by double clicking on the mask. And I'll change the view so that we can see the onion skinning mode. And I'll just paint over these edges here just to get a better result like so. And I'll press OK. And that looks much better. The mask is not perfect, but that's OK. I can always paint with black to hide or white to reveal. So I'm going to reveal this part of her shirt and that looks much, much better. The next bonus tip for this section that I will show you is what to do with these flyaway hairs. And what you can do is create a new layer and clip it to the layer below. Control Alt G on Windows, Command Option G on the Mac to make a clipping mask. Now everything on this layer will only affect the layer below. And I can select the brush tool and I can make a larger brush by tapping on the right bracket key on the keyboard and then holding Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac to temporarily activate the eyedropper tool and just select the hair color that is right next to the edge there and paint. And I can just keep painting on those edges. For these areas, we're going to have to use a different layer. So I'll create a new layer, Control Alt G, Command Option G on the Mac and find a light color like this color here and paint over those edges. And the trick will be to use a blending mode to get better results. With this layer selected, I can change the blending mode to darken so that that effect is only applied on the brightest pixels. And if it's too strong, I can always bring down the opacity. The point is, is that I don't want any white hair strands. And of course, the more time that you spend fine tuning these areas, the better results you'll get. The next step would be to do exactly the same thing on the other side. In this next tip, I'm going to show you what to do when you have hair that is very difficult to select. Like in this case here where the background is very busy and her hair is very fine and very bright. And there's definitely no contrast between the foreground and background. So we'll start with what we did earlier. I'll select this layer and then click on remove background just to see what the artificial intelligence does. And it does a fairly good job. It's not that bad considering how busy the background is and how fine and bright her hair is. And to better see her hair up against the background, what I'll do is create a new solid color fill layer and I'll make it a dark gray. And there's several things you can do. I'm going to press Control J, Command J on the Mac on this layer to duplicate it and I'll work on the layer on top. And the first thing that I would recommend that you do is see if you can improve this layer mask. So with the mask selected, you can go on Selected Mask and then switch over into the black and white view. And with the Refine Edge tool, just click and drag over the edge and see if you can get an improvement on that selection. Basically, what you're trying to do is avoid these blurry areas like I have down here. And it may be difficult to do in this case, but I'm still going to try and see what the result is. But as you can see, I still get a lot of blurry areas, so it probably won't be that great of a selection. Again, it's not terrible considering how difficult it was to select, but definitely not ideal. So what I'll do is I'll just delete this layer and duplicate this layer one more time. Control J on Windows, Command J on the Mac. And I'm going to show you something else that you can do. I'll select the lasso tool and I'm just going to make a selection around the hair that is out here on the edges that is just way too difficult to select. Like so. Then I'll fill with black on the layer mask so that I can hide those pixels. Black is currently my background color. So I'll press control and backspace to fill with black so that now I just have this straight edge, which obviously doesn't look very good. But what I can do now is find an image that does have easy to select hair and create a brush out of it so that we can use it on this photo. Let me show you what I mean. I have this second image here and in this case, her hair is fantastic. We can definitely see the separation between her hair and the background. So I'll create a brush out of her hair so that I can use it on the other image. First, I'll select the crop tool and I'll crop the areas that I don't need. Basically up to this area here is good. I'll click on the check mark to commit the changes. Then I'll go into the channels panel and I'll look for the channel that has more contrast between her hair and the background. And it looks like the blue channel does have more contrast. So I'll duplicate this channel by clicking and dragging it into the new channel icon. And what I'm going to do is press control I on Windows, command I on the Mac to invert. I want to make the things that I want to keep white and everything else black. So what I can do now is go into image adjustment levels 
and just make the background as black as possible. It's already black, so I don't have to do too much work. And then everything else as bright as possible. And you can adjust accordingly until you get the results that you want. In this case, something like this will work. I'll press OK. I'll select the lasso tool one more time and I'll just make a really quick selection over these areas that didn't get converted into white. This should be completely white. And I'll add this area here as well by holding shift and clicking and dragging. Then to fill with white, which is the foreground color, press alt and backspace. That's option delete on the Mac. Now I can load the bright pixels as a selection. So I'll hold control on Windows, command on the Mac and click on the blue copy thumbnail to load the bright pixels of selection, as I said. Then I'll click on RGB, go back into the layers panel and hide this layer. Then I'll create a new layer and fill that layer with black. So make sure that your foreground color is black. So click on this icon to make the foreground color black and then press Alt and Backspace, Option, Delete on the Mac to fill with the foreground color, which is black in this case. Then I'll press Control D, Command D on the Mac to deselect. What I'll do now is create one more layer and fill that layer with white. White is my foreground color, so control backspace on Windows, command delete on the Mac. And we can turn this into a brush. So I'm going to go into edit, define brush preset. I can call this curly hair and press OK. Photoshop will then automatically activate the brush that you just created and you can paint with it. When I go back into my working document, you'll notice that the brush is so much bigger than the image I was working with, and that's great. You can tap on the left bracket key on the keyboard to reduce the brush size. Then you can do one of two things. First, you can try painting with white on the layer mask to reveal the edges and see if that looks realistic. And in this case, I think that it's working fairly good. Remember that in Photoshop 2020, we got the ability to rotate the brush with a keyboard shortcut. So if I tap on the right arrow key on the keyboard, the brush rotates and I can continue painting on edges like so. Or you can use the angle control in the options bar. Totally up to you. But the point is, is that you can now simply start rotating your brush accordingly and painting on the edges so that you get the result that you want. And obviously you can resize your brush and paint on the edges like so. Also, you can create a layer underneath everything else, make the brush a little bit bigger, and then hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click to select the color, and paint with that color as well to get better results. And I can just keep doing that over and over again on different areas until I get a much nicer edge. So this is way more realistic than what I had before, which was this here. As you can see, the edges don't look as good. So now when I bring in the background that I'm going to use for my composite, I can start making decisions on what shade the hair will be. In this case, what I probably would do is just select the brightest pixels here of her hair and then just use that to match the lighting in the scene like so. And just keep selecting different hair colors to make it more realistic. When I zoom in, you'll see that the edges are looking pretty good. However, you do need to watch out for these areas that have straight edges. So you definitely will need to select the mask, select that same brush and paint with white with a small brush on those areas just to make sure that the edges are not straight. So you can keep panning around the image by holding the space bar and make sure that there are no straight edges on the mask. And I think this looks pretty good. I'll double click on the hand tool and enable this layer. And obviously, the more time that you spend fine-tuning these smaller details, the better your results will be.